Hi everyone, uh, I'm Katie McBride. I work on the index events uh, across uh, Middle East. Um, over the past six months, we've been spending a lot of time talking to the community. We thought right about now would be a really good time to start uh, recording them and, and sharing all the really interesting facts that we learn. So today we've got uh, Sakina Dagawala Moella. She is owner and design director at Light Funk. She's also the Middle East ambassador of Women in Light. And um, she started Light Funk back in 2016, um, which is a versatile, creative and passionate lighting consultancy, um, doing lots of work in, uh, across the Middle East, and that is in hospitality, residential and commercial sectors. So let's start with some uh, good questions and getting to know you, Sakina. So welcome. Thank you, Katie. Great way to be here this beautiful cloudy morning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so let's start with the first question. Tell us a bit about okay. the most challenging project you've worked on. Wow. Okay. Um, so usually most lighting projects are challenging because most people don't quite understand the intricacies of uh, lighting design. But in this instance, I think I'm going to focus on a project that's called Dynamic Advanced Training, which is based in Dubai South in uh, Mohammed bin Rashid Aerospace Hub. I always have to get that correct. This is quite a long sentence. Um, so what was challenging about this project is that it is the world's first independent um, evacuation um, and training facility, which has real life planes and fuselages on there. But um, what happened was, Initially, the client never had a budget, didn't think about bringing on board a lighting designer until he saw the solution that he was given um, by the MEP contractor at the time, at the time, which is just massive high bay fixtures everywhere. Um, so obviously the challenge was that there was no budget. Um, the second thing was he had many, many different spaces that are interconnected. So you've got this beautiful uh, double story, um, well, I should say, open to the mezzanine level um, reception. He's got a signature restaurant that was designed by Vinci and Vinci. And then he's got the training area with a three and a half meter wave pool, which would simulate real life rough seas. And then the actual planes themselves. So um, what we had to do was not just like the space, we had um, this warehouse area where the planes are. And um, it's about 12 meters high with skylights that obviously being in Dubai get really dirty. So you can never rely on them to give you enough daylight. So we spent a lot of time with no budget, um, trying to ensure that we can give um, a solution that can change during the day, um, engage when the training is going on, all the way, like that is at the, what we call the macro level. And then at the micro level, we even design all of the lighting inside the plane. But what was different with this project is that you have a reception which is supposed to feel like a very high class, you know, business style reception, which is smart, which is a bit more masculine. And then you've got this beautiful restaurant upstairs that is um, open to the reception from the mezzanine level, but it has been designed so beautifully and so eloquently. And then you've got the training area and all of these three spaces actually interconnect. Um, and finally, what was really amazing was that not only did we manage to um, create a solution that was diverse, that was versatile, going back to the word that you used, but it still felt as if you were within a space that changed personality as you move through. But it wasn't a stark change. It was kind of like this flow that went through. And then you obviously have these uh, spaces that are punctuated with vistas of the different areas. So you could be in the reception and you can see training ongoing and there's a plane that is nose diving or you could be upstairs enjoying a cup of coffee and you know you could enjoy all of this beautiful art because that's the other thing as well but this particular project they engage an actual artist who also runs an art consultancy but you know they were on site painting while we're commissioning at the same time so it was one of those things that you look back on because it's such a fairly large project. Mm. I mean, I think um, the actual training area was 40 by 25 meters. And then 
obviously, I even forgot to mention that there is a jungle room and an Arctic room where they simulate, you know, landing or crashing in those spaces. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I think that would be the most challenging one and also very, very satisfying so far because it's one of a kind. Yeah, and it sounds like I imagine the, the client was very happy with your results as well. Yes, yes. I think they were. They very much were. Or they still are. <laughs> they <laughs> That's, good. Go. That's good. So yeah. we're going to go on to a slightly more personal and fun question now. So, uh, Sakina, okay. tell us about the, your favourite item in your house. I think that's really difficult because I um, love everything in my house. It could always be better, you know. Um, we're never happy as designers. But I think it would probably be the battery-operated um, lamp that was given to us as a Christmas present by my friend Courtney Mark from Studio Mark. Um, it's a floss fixture, which is like a rose gold finish. And we take it everywhere. We take it outside when we're sitting and getting bitten by mosquitoes and we dine by it or try to shove it behind the sofa so you can see what you're eating. So that would be the one, yes. Sounds like it goes with your uh, philosophy of being versatile, creative and passionate as well. <laughs> yes. Yes, very much so. <laughs> okay, so what is your go-to when you're stuck for inspiration? If you ever get stuck for inspiration? Um, I don't usually get stuck for inspiration because I think my imagination is fairly wild. Um, so I don't have an issue constantly finding inspiration in different things. I'm, I'm a very curious kind of personality. But when I am stuck for inspiration, it's usually that just, I need to get on with things. So I call my mom and um, she just gives me a telling to, to be honest. Uh, so <laughs> that's my number one go-to. Um, and then I'd probably say uh, books. I read a lot. Um, so I just randomly um, choose. I always have five or six books on my Kindle. I know everybody says it's not the real book, but it's easy when you have to travel. Yeah. Um, so I constantly am in a different book at any given time because words I find are very expressive and a lot of the um, work that we do is very expressive. Mm. So I say yes, my mom <laughs> and books. Okay, and what's the, what's the last book that, uh, or the current book that you're reading? Oh, that's a terrible one because I never remember um, topics, of, like the book names. Um, but I know that it's about philosophy and uh, psychiatry, and it's about um, Adler, who's a psychiatrist who was around the same time as Freud and Jung, mm. but he has a completely different take on um, how we perceive or live our lives based on past influences. Yeah. So that's what I'm reading up about. Um, it's actually a translation, this, this book, if I remember correctly, from an Eastern language, and it's one of the first times that it's been translated. And the way it's written is that it's um, between um, what I would say is an older gentleman who basically says that everybody can be happy and everybody can be successful. And this young man who comes to him and says, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. So it's a, it's a dialogue and it's almost like a, like a debate, which is a bit of a strange one. I haven't read yeah. something like that in a long time. That, yeah. sounds, that sounds pretty interesting. When you do uh, remember the title of that, can you please share it? Um, yes, I will do. <laughs> great. Okay, so going quite nicely on then, I guess, do you have a mentor? And if you do, who is it and, and why are they? Oh, I have heaps of mentors. Um, <laughs> I think I, I will always go back to um, the people that actually got me into lighting. So if I had to say just one person, it would be a lady called Indira Barve. Uh, she taught me when I was uh, undertaking my bachelor's in interior design here. Um, and she's the one who taught me lighting 101 and um, was constantly there for me to ensure that I followed the right path because she said I had a, what was the word she used? She said, I just had a lot of um, fingers and too many pies and I needed to stick to one pie. Yeah. And uh, that pie ended up being lighting. Um, she's a constant inspiration because, you know, she's a Russian and Indian in ancestry and 
she now lives in in Amsterdam. No, well, actually, she moved to um, to the Hague, and she's um, she's constantly there for you when you're stuck in terms of your personal um, goals. Or I usually get stuff for personal inspiration, um, but she's overcome so many things that I know of about her life, and she goes around and takes these amazing pictures that she posts online and she's got almost a thousand followers and she never really did it because she wanted people to follow her but little things that she posts on a daily basis I find really make a difference to different people around the world Mm -hmm. so she's a constant inspiration because she's dedicated her life to constantly helping other people through Mm -hmm. this visual language that she's always putting online Mm -hmm. yeah so Indira Barve yeah cool. that's cool okay so Sakina if um <clears throat> Hollywood were to make a movie about you who would you cast as yourself okay so this is going to be a funny one but um I don't know if you if you know the um the movie Larry Crown it's got Google Mbatharo in it okay yeah and you know she basically is constantly trying to get Tom Hanks to just step out of his comfort zone and stop yeah. being such a, I don't know, a drab kind of person. <laughs> I think I would be that kind of personality because even at work when we're having a team meeting, sure, um, you'd like I, I try to stay serious, but I'm the first one to you know crack a joke and say, "So come on, like you know, just step out of your comfort zone, do something different." Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I would cast myself as. Okay, and so then what what do you think your movie, the movie of your life, would be called? Oh, my God. Um, It would have to have psychedelic something in it, that's for sure. Um, Probably um, catching up with your thoughts, (laughs) because I can never catch up with my own thoughts. Nice. It would be something really weird like that. I like it very much. Okay, so if you weren't uh, a lighting designer, what other career do you think you you would have chosen? Um, (laughs) I think I would be a cleaner um, because (laughs) it just gives me so much... um, I don't know, as, as soon as I've, I've cleaned something, and I've cleaned really well, um, and it's nothing to do with uh, OCD or anything, but I just, that feeling that you get a uh, gratification that you've done something really well, and it's spotless. Mm. I do that with design when it comes to lighting, and I find that I do it, you know, to probably the angst of a lot of people around me. Um, yeah, I think I would be a cleaner. Great, perfectionist. I think. All right, last question then. Um, what does design mean to you? Ah, okay. So for me, I'm going to look at that as a generic term. Mm-hmm. Um, I think design for us, as all designers, whether you're a landscape designer, uh, an interior architect, or even an architect, they are it's curated spaces of art which are basically an amalgamation of thoughts, um, of your dreams, of your creativity, the technical challenges you face, you know, which all basically just lead to a canvas that you're creating for people to dwell in. That's what design means to me. It's like a journey of, of art so that you're creating spaces that people can feel, um, all the positivity that you want them to feel, you know, where they can feel indulged or they can feel relaxed. So, yeah, it, they just curated spaces of art um, for me. I love that. I love that. Well, Sakina, thank you so much for your time today. And it was really good to get to know you a bit better. Um, really appreciate all of your insights, your creativity, your fun. Um, the hair and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon sure thank you very much for your time and inviting me and I'm looking forward to seeing the next installation of your interviews